بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to episode 3 of the Talking Deen podcast brought to you by Voice of the Ummah My name is Majid and my co-host today are Brother Rash and Brother Aftab Okay, so let's get on with the discussion today SubhanAllah, we're getting closer to Ramadan and it's a time when Muslims are, are getting excited and we're, we're, down, we're counting down now to Ramadan and unfortunately there's one topic that always arises at this time of the year and that is the issue to do with moon sighting and the debates begin uh, and shall I say sometimes even arguments uh, who's right who isn't right so inshallah this is something that we want to discuss today and with my panel so inshallah to begin I want to start off with a question uh, to you brother Rash so you know how I'm sure I certainly have had these discussions many times throughout these years I'm sure you have as well um, how do you tackle this issue when you're speaking to people uh, because at the end of the day we'll see that Muslims um, especially people externally sometimes there's a criticism that why is it that Muslims cannot unite for Ramadan or for Eid and sometimes it can even come across as embarrassing so when you're having these discussions to, with people what is your take on this? To be fair I think previously um, the case was very much of you get a bit of information in the earlier days maybe I'm talking maybe five ten years ago you get a bit of information and you thought okay oh, I think that's the right one so I'll, <laughs> I'll use that bit of information to prove why I'm right and someone else is wrong and I think yeah. in the past it was a little bit of that because it was the little bit of knowledge you had and you felt okay this is a important day and we should be really we should be starting together but at the same time you almost felt like okay why isn't everybody starting on the same day as me yeah, yeah. and there'd be better or that, that way we'd all be starting the same but the, I think the issue was originally that everybody had that stance so actually in the last maybe number of years it's been more a case of thinking it's not about going who's right specifically and who's wrong it should be more about Islamic unity so whenever someone asks me I try to pose that question back to them and say you know why are we even in this situation why are we even discussing right now who's right and who's wrong because actually if we look at it and I'm, we're going to discuss some of the evidences later on it's, it's more about making sure that we should be unified as an ummah rather than debating and, and arguing like you said about who's right and wrong so I've tried to take it back onto onto that side rather than really going, okay, let's sit down and work out, you know, the the different the different reasons. Well, Subhanallah, I think that is a, that is a better approach because um, I mean, myself included, you know, you exhaust a lot of time and effort and energy over the years, and sometimes even maybe the wasfasa wasfasa kicks in and you want to prove that yeah. you are right, and then and unfortunately the. the the issue is sometimes where even in the same household we have the father doing uh, Eid and Ramadan on a separate day and it sometimes comes to this. So at that stage, you know, uh, it, you can uh, sometimes maybe you're disappointed or maybe even angry and you can come across in this way. But you're right. The, the real question is, as Muslims, what we should ask is why is it every year we're having this, we're having this discussion? And I think it boils down to the fact that uh, this is the result of disunity um, because if we look in the past when the Ummah was united uh, under a single authority we see that you know the announcement for Ramadan and Eid was done centrally and then you know everyone else just followed suit mm. and I think that's the issue today that's very important and the one that we need to tackle is that why is there disunity amongst the Muslims? So do you have any thoughts on that, Atab? I think there's a, there's a number of ways of looking at this. And I think we find ourselves in a unnatural situation of where you know, we've got an identity which is taking, uh, taking more prominence before people refer to themselves as Muslims. <coughs> and that's usually down to local identities, etc., which is a situation that's being placed, placed upon us. 
Um, you mean like uh, uh, nationalities? Nationalities, yeah. So uh, that that's the first thing, and I think the other thing that's happened is as a result of these groups that uh, created, be it at the national level or even uh, even more localized within communities, uh, within like certain areas, and whether you know you affiliate to a certain mosque or not. The second point is that people have been given this idea that they don't have the ability to understand the rules of Islam, which I think is very dangerous and scary because this is one of the reasons why people are being scared to openly talk about issues like the moon sighting and what's on their mind. And I think up until recently, people have started to get a bit braver and started to talk about, for example, why is it that we're not fasting when people in Indonesia said that they've seen the moon? But up until like last year or the year before, people were scared to talk about this stuff that was on their mind because they've been made to feel like they don't have the ability to understand these rules and therefore they shouldn't be questioning people who they see as being in authority. But also, would you not say that the 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 disunity in this respect, a uh, general disunity, disunity um, it actually benefits those who are against Islam, those who are against the Muslims because... You know, in reality, uh, when, for example, uh, we have Hajj, and my personal opinion is that if it was possible for the enemies of Islam, for them to make another Kaaba somewhere else, mm-hmm. uh, they would do their best to make sure that the Muslims don't even have Hajj at the same time, right? Because the fact that anything that shows unity in the Ummah is tr- they're trying to erode at it, mm-hmm. yeah. they're trying to remove it. Okay, but in reality, we know that we have one Allah, we have one Quran, we have one Messenger, sallam, you know, and there's yeah. other things. We have one Hajj, we have one Mecca, and all you know, the Kaaba, and all these things. So, in fact, when the issue of the moon sighting, which is actually linked to the, the more important issue of disunity in general, what it does show, it does show that uh, there's disunity, but it, this this unity it shows it to be acceptable based on lines of nationalism. So it seems like yes, you are uh, uh, Bangladeshi and you are Pakistani and you are Indian or you are Indonesian. So it's fine for you to have your own thing going on where you are, and it's sort of made like this is fine. This this is no problem. I agree with you, and I think up until the last few years, I think you could see it being prevalent like like that. Um, but I think what you're starting to see now is actually just go a step back. Even though that that was what was happening during the actual month of Ramadan, the concept of brotherhood was still coming through strongly. Yeah. When people open their fast together, they uh, they're at work with probably other Muslims who are from regardless of what background they are from. Mm-hmm. They have this affiliation and asking people how's how's your fasting going and supporting each other. And you know, whenever you go to the mosque, regardless of whatever mosque you 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 go to, whether you know you're you're traveling and you just turn up at the mosque and it's iftar time and you'll be made to feel welcome, regardless that these people have never mm-hmm. seen you before. So Ramadan is actually the month where the brotherhood and Hajj is probably another example where the concept of brotherhood comes through yeah, very, very strongly. So it's not uh, surprising then that these kind of uh, occasions is when divide is, 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 is established or people try to establish divide. For example, on Hajj, when they keep Muslims from different areas completely separately Separate. to say you are different. Yeah. And on Ramadan, again, you know, actually, what group are you from? Oh, yeah, you fast on a different day. Or, yeah. yeah, you don't follow this sighting because we, we follow this sighting. Yeah. So, so you're right. I think people have tried to deliberately create that divide. But you can still see signs that people haven't embraced that divide. Something, something's there holding them back because it doesn't sit right with them. No, 100%. But what I was also saying is that you know, if you, if you if you think about in reality, the uh, in Islam, there's the ummah should be under one state, with one ruler, and this is something which is uh, undisputed. Okay, but what now happens here? We're not even talking about provinces. Even if someone said this particular province to this province, here we have countries, and these countries are sometimes side by side, yeah. right? And 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 even though they're side by side, sometimes because in those countries. Because of the governments, they announce that Ramadan and Eid is on a particular day. Okay, what it does, it reinforces that the Moroccans have an Eid, the Moroccans have a Ramadan, even though it's next, you know, it's next door to a country where the the, the in regards to the moon sighting, there should be no. It's not even a different province. But what it does in a way, it legitimizes, or what they're trying to do anyway, what they're trying to do 
is they're trying to legitimize this, but the point you made, which is a very valid point, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, it's not working. For the rush. One thing, just you reminded me from what you just said. You know, like you said, I think this issue in some in some societies and communities is more prevalent than others. Yeah. And in some countries it's more prevalent than others. We see it here quite a bit. I don't know how much it is mm. in other places, but you know, like you give examples like Morocco and I can give examples of like Bangladesh and stuff. And what sometimes happens is if the like if it's announced at the top, like the government announced it, there's some places that will just go, regardless of which opinion that I follow, it's been announced, let's do Eid, let's do Ramadan. Actually, that highlights that, you know, if there was somewhere centralised that says it's Eid tomorrow or it's Ramadan tomorrow, actually people would do it. People would follow because they've already come to the conclusion that, okay, someone's deciding that, someone's already gone through the evidence that someone said it's tomorrow, therefore we'll all do it. I think people would be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. But as you were saying, the whole concept of nation states has made that very blurry. Go back to your point. It's the authority. Yeah, what you're saying is that uh, when the authorities say it, people follow. Yeah, yeah. And this is the point. If you had the Islamic authority and a single authority, then we wouldn't have this problem. Yeah. And I think this is why the discussion now then becomes where people actually have to understand what is actually required from us as Muslims, not just on this issue, but on, ev on any issue. Mm. And uh, what differs us from every other religion out there is that for us, our way of life has already been ordained. Allah has already told us what we can and what we cannot do. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says to us uh, in Surah Maida, uh, where He says that uh, on this day I have completed my, I have bestowed my favor upon you and completed your deen. So the deen is complete. You know, regardless of whether it was revealed, uh, provided to us fourteen hundred years ago, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knew what times we were going to come and live in. But the deen has been provided for, it's established. And the other premise that we need to refer people back to is uh, what we can and cannot take and where our mind plays a role and where it doesn't. Mm. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that, you know, think, think about what is around you when you're coming to the understanding of what Islam is and the, to the belief and in Islam. the creator, yeah. Creator, uh, yeah. you know, these are signs for men of understanding where Allah refers to the separation of night and day, etc. But once we come to Islam and we've established, yes, this is deen from Allah. Yes. At that point, Allah has laid down what our criteria is. Yeah. And He says in Surah Hashr, where Allah SWT says, Whatever the Messenger has given you, take it. But whatever He has forbidden or prohibited for you, abstain from it. So, our premise is already established that for the rules of Islam, or actually for everything that we do, we have to refer back to Islam. And at this point, Allah has told us that, yeah, whatever the Messenger has given you, accept it. And whatever he has uh, prohibited for you, abstain from it. Right. And that's what we need to take Muslims back to, whether we're discussing this issue or any other issue. And, it, okay. and you know, I would even say as part of that is the fact that we've come to the point where maybe we're accepting the status quo a little bit. You know, because we're accepting, you'll see, you'll speak to Muslims in Western nations now. And their mindset is very much a case of, well, we're probably going to be living here forever. Our kids are going to be here forever. Mm. Their kids are going to be here forever. So let's establish something that's going to give us some rules for here. Rather than thinking, actually, that's being pragmatic to the extent that it becomes un-Islamic. Because you're not saying, well, let's take the rulings and the, and the laws from Islam. Let's actually go, because our reality is so drastically different, let's not even think about what Islam says about this. Let's try and implement solutions for ourselves here and like you said you can do that to an extent on certain things you can't do that on things that Allah has already decided and the Prophet ﷺ has already decided for us and that's where it becomes very dangerous so I think it's it's quite evident that um, the issue is is far deeper yeah. than just the moon sighting um, and it's more to do with the issue to do with disunity and the absence of, uh, of a central authority to unite around but in regards to Ramadan itself, I think it's important to understand that um, the issue we're discussing, moon sighting, isn't dependent on a single authority as such. Um, and what we need to, because what we're talking about here really is a beginning of a calendar month. You know, when I was when I was younger, to me Ramadan was it was this this special this special time. But only when I you know became more wiser did I realize. That this was actually just another month in the Islamic ca uh, calendar. Okay, so in regards to the methodology of uh, arriving at uh, when the the beginning of the month is and um, when Eid begins, I think it's very important at this stage 
to um, uh, to emphasize, I think what Brother Abdullah made a point that we need to uh, refer back to the Quran and the Sunnah for this methodology. Because sometimes a lot of the arguments you hear, they are uh, either uh, scientific uh, or they are opinions by some learned people. But I think they're very important. it's important to go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. And in reality, if we look at the, the time of the Messenger Sallallahu and we look at the revelation, we see that even at the time of the, of the Ansar, uh, you know, the, some of the greatest Muslims to have ever lived, even they had issues at the time of when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was alive, mm. when they almost went to war again, mm. right? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told them that, you know, you have to hold on to the rope of Allah and be united. And the rope of Allah is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu So it's very important that if we're speaking about there's an issue about moon sighting or generally disunity, it's very important that we have to acknowledge that the reference point to keep us together can only be the Quran and Sunnah and not nationalism, not tribalism or any other isms. So it has to come from the Quran and the Sunnah. I think that's, that's maybe the first point. And some of the examples of the ayats you gave, they're very clear. The Prophet said, you know, take from what he has brought and reject from what he hasn't. And these are the principles that don't allow us to delve out of the, the realm of the, the Quran and the Sunnah into our own opinions or adopting things from uh, Western ideology. We are, rest we are restricted to uh, to Islam. So, you know, in regards to the issue about referring back to the Quran and Sunnah, I don't think we would find many Muslims that are, that are going to differ on this, okay? But at the same time, especially when we, the, the moon sighting issue, you'll you come across many opinions, or whether you can call them opinions, uh, in regards to um, other methodologies of when you follow, uh, when you, you know, when you start Ramadan, and when you end Ramadan, and so on. So, in view of the Quran and the Sunnah, I think it's a good time to discuss, you know, what is the correct methodology for us to be arriving at the beginning of Ramadan and um, the beginning, well, the start of uh, the Eid festivals. So, inshallah, to any of the any of you guys, I want to throw that, that question out. Well, I th just to add, uh, kind of at the beginning, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm sure we'll, we'll go into a bit more detail. One thing is to add... I've been doing a little bit of reading recently as well, is that this concept of, you know, obviously we live in a very scientifically driven world today. We live in a very scientifically driven world. True. So it, the emphasis has very much been on, okay, we have better technologies, we have microscopes, so we have all of these tools, so why not use them better to make life easier for us? Yeah. And naturally, I think we discussed it a little bit previously, even the previous podcasts that, yes, you know, it's important to take technologies that can make life easier for us in terms of making our practicing of our deen easier for us. Yeah. But the issue is, in terms of the, the moon sighting, in terms of, and you've simplified it for us even more, it's not even about moon sighting for Eid and Ramadan. It's about moon sighting for the start of a month. It's a month. It's a month. It's a calendar month, yeah? yeah. So there's an issue between the comparison between a scientific month or an astronomical month and the start <coughs> of a month for the Islamic calendar because and the difference is okay. that when you start a calendar month from an Islamic perspective okay. it's a case of what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us that you wait to see the moon and if it's a cloudy day then you complete the 30 yeah so that's not astronomical as in that's not based on astronomy there that's based on on someone's testimony that's based on someone looking and going okay I can see the moon or I can't it's based on sighting Okay, the fact that you can calculate it only comes into play based on when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying to us that, you know, then calculate it for the purpose of saying, okay, we've got to the 29th day, we're now looking for it, let's calculate it now. So it's, the calculation is a secondary bit. The initial bit is a case of citing for the start of a calendar month, putting aside Eid and putting aside Ramadan. So I think this is very important because what's happened is because we're now thinking very scientifically, yeah. we've forgotten the fact that the advice of the messenger himself is very much a case of 
you've got something which is an Islamic month, not necessarily an astronomical calendar yeah. month, if that makes sense. Yeah. But you know, so I think that's important to just a couple compare. of a couple of points to to bounce off from what you said is that uh, first f- first um, misunderstanding people may have is that at that time people couldn't do calculations. You know how advanced the Egyptians were at the time mm. of Pharaoh. If, if you read into it, uh, even up until today, they still can't work out how the, they built the pyramids. pyramids but yeah. if you look at how the pyramids are placed and stuff like this, you will see that there's a lot of wisdom in that, right? Um, but in regards to the uh, the point you made about the um, the scientific element to it, mm. what people don't understand is that the month begins not at the birth of the new moon yeah. is when it's sighted. sighted exactly. So what you're right. So you know, using all these uh, calculations, people say the moon could not have been born or it was born, etc., etc. But the issue to do is with the sighting, and going on to your the the hadith and the message of Salam that if you look for it on the 29th night, if you don't see it because it's cloudy, you do an extra day. Now it could be that the moon has actually been born. Oh, exactly. Okay. Right, and the next day should really be the first, exactly. okay? But it isn't the first. The first is two days time yeah. because the issue is to do with the uh, sighting. So, I think just to sort of move on, an important point, and inshallah, you guys can hopefully elaborate. Is what we hear a lot when it comes down to moon sighting, and you mentioned it a few times, is you mentioned testimony, yeah. and you mentioned witnessed, and you mentioned sighting of the moon. So this boils down to the testimony. So what, what do we want to uh, mention about the testimony? Because this is a very important aspect, I think, in the whole discussion. So I think it comes back down to, uh, again, let's refer back to Islam now. Um, to the to Muhammad Sallam um, and what Allah has ordered us. So in origin, every Muslim is trustworthy because they've taken that, uh, they've, you know, they've, they've sworn by Allah that, you know, we bear witness that Allah is the, the creator and Muhammad Sallam is is the messenger. So as soon as someone takes a shahada, they they are trustworthy. And this is something that has been established through the practice of Muhammad Sallam. So on the moon sighting issue, for example, when Bedouins would come up to Muhammad Sallam awesome. and say, uh, you know, we've seen the moon, the first question that Muhammad Sallam would ask them is, do you bear witness that um, there is one God, that Allah is, is the creator? Yeah. And they would say yes. And then Muhammad Sallam would ask them that, you know, do you bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? Sallam. And they would, if they said yes, then Muhammad would accept what they've given. So here the premise has already been established by Muhammad So So Muslim in origin is trustworthy. Uh, and then this is actually executed in everything that happens in, uh, in, in judicial matters as well, where the judge would accept the testimony of a person unless a reason has been given for them not to be trustworthy. Okay. And again, this has to come from Sharia as well. This is not just us using our own mind. This is Sharia dictates who is trustworthy, who isn't. So someone who has uh, been committed of a crime, someone who has been known to be a liar, uh, and even extension whereby a wife cannot give testimony for her husband, vice versa, yeah. a father for the son, the son for the father, or an employee for the employer in an issue that's related to employment. And these are the issues where testimony is not accepted. Yeah, because Allah is already recognizing there could be bias there. So we need to make sure we take testimony as independently as possible. So he's already clarified from us where we can take testimony but from. Like said, Allah has done it. Allah, Allah has told has us it. that this is where you can't accept it. Mm. So anything else where these exceptions haven't been given, we cannot use our own mind and say, right, we're going to use it in this situation. So basically what you're saying is if somebody was to testify on a particular matter and you had no good reason to doubt his testimony, that you cannot reject his testimony. You cannot reject it. And if you did, what would that imply? That you're, you're questioning their, their integrity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're saying that the oath that they made, you're questioning that in itself. Yeah. And this is why it's important to cl- compare that testimony aspect to the scientific aspect, isn't it? Because you're, now you're saying that the to start the calendar month, to start Ramadan, to declare Eid, mm. is actually based on this testimony. It's not based on specifically when scientifically it the moon is possible to be sighted. If it was, then the hadith would mention these things, wouldn't it? Instead, yeah. the evidences all dictate that actually mm. it's more to do with someone sights it, and as long as you can't question them 
in their faith for whatever reason or as long as there is no bias there for the conditions yeah. that Allah has provided then you take their testimony and you take it at face value and then you start based on that day yeah subhanallah and I which think, is really simple as well it makes it simplifies the whole argument as well you know if you if you were to look at the uh, contracts contract system and and, and uh, different aspects of uh, islam whether it's the social system you'll see the rules are very simple Islam hasn't come, Islam has actually come to make things very simple, okay, because it deals with humans' issues, and if it doesn't need to be complicated, it doesn't need to be complicated. But what you see is actually, we overcomplicate the issues ourselves. I mean, from the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, do not fast until you cite the crescent, and do not stop fasting until you cite it. If it is cloudy, then calculate it, okay. Uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu said, uh, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say, "If you cite it, then break fast, and if it's cloudy, then calculate about it. Fast when you cite it, and when you cite it, you know. And if it's cloudy, then complete the count of Shaban. So that principle is actually uh, very simple, okay. And I think something that's really important as well is that throughout the throughout the the, the years and throughout the ages, Muslims understood that. When it says, uh, do not fast until, or, or do not break your fast until, this is a command to the entire Ummah. Yes. Okay, the Prophet ﷺ here is commanding the, the entire Ummah. And this Ummah is not divided like it is today in the, on, in the geographical sense. Okay, so when, the, when the, it's announced that the moon has been sighted, then it's binding on Muslims to accept it. And in fact, you know, some people may argue that, you know, uh, at that time, there may have been times when it was done differently. Okay, this could be down to the fact that there was time issues and the, it takes a certain time to get from one place to another. In fact, today, subhanAllah, with this simple principle we said before, and the added technology of the fact that today, one message from in, in, a, in a second can be on the other side of the world, this should be so much easier. Yeah, it should make it easier rather than where we have found in history, if there was days where things were done on a different day, yeah. you could understand it because maybe the message to get from one place on the globe to another place would have taken time and therefore testimony yeah. to pass from one place to another will have taken a degree of time. So understandably they did it or may have done it on different days. Whereas today, that we can't use that excuse. If it's cited in one place, we'll know about it everywhere. And the issue of the testimony, I think what it boils down to is the fact that now what we have is... And, and you, I, think, I think it has to be said like this. You have the sunnah versus um, uh, calculations or science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. science. It's probably a better way, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because what you have is you have a Muslim saying, testifying... Muslims or Muslim, okay, generally even one Muslim is enough because of the hadith of the Bedouin, but just say Muslims because whenever it's, uh, it's uh, seen, it's be seen by many, many people, okay, is that what you're saying, the argument is, is that no, it's not possible for it to have been because of the calculations. So that boils down to the issue is that on what basis do we reject? The same way if you, if you go to a meat shop, and you go to a meat shop and you're buying the meat there, the halal meat, you're not asking that guy for a video of you seeing the, you sacri the, him yeah. sacrificing the animal. You do it based on the trust. trust. He's trust. He's a Muslim. By default, you don't even ask, brother, is the meat halal here? This would yeah. be a huge insult. Yeah, exactly. You're, you know, I know a brother, you're questioning them. I know yeah. a brother who in, in the haram, you know, he was going to places like, you know, you got some shops around the like KFC and stuff. And he was going there and asking the, the shopkeepers, is this halal? People getting angry. <laughs> so in the same way, if, if you wouldn't question someone, a, a, a person selling meat, then on that basis, when it's announced, and, and this is actually a, probably a good point to mention the fact that, you know, a lot of times, it's not, not all the time, but sometimes it's announced by just say in Saudi Arabia. Okay. And what people maybe uh, disagree with it because there are problems in Saudi Arabia and Wahhabism and etc etc but the reality is is as brother of Thabam mean, you know because we've been there we've spoken to people local people there the reality is is that it's seen by normal people mm -hmm. and then they go to the courts and then when it's verified then it's announced 
I, I think that's a really good point uh, because uh, you know people automatically refer to Saudi Arabia just on regardless of which other countries have uh, you know side of the moon, um, and you know I wouldn't take something which impacts whether I go to Jannah or Jahannam from the Saudi government, just like I wouldn't take it from any government in the world. Yeah, the trust is not there. But we have to separate the people, the Muslims who live in these mm-hmm. countries, who are the ones giving the testimony from the ones who announce it. Um, and therefore, it comes back down to what you were saying. The testimony of a Muslim has already been established. Mm. The Shahada is there. And that's when these people who have seen the moon go to the court and declare it. And the other issue that uh, I just want to bring in is that I can't remember a situation where it has only been Muslims in Saudi Arabia who have seen the moon. Mm. The testimony comes from a number of countries, but it's always talked about Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia like they're the you know the mouthpiece of the Muslim world for some for some reason, which they're not. They're not no not at all. I think where that's come from, and I've seen some videos and things in the past where it's very much like where Saudi Arabia will have announced it, yeah. then they've subsequently looked at scientific calculation and gone. There is no way at yeah. all the moon could have been sighted because it wasn't physically, scientifically yeah. possible. So it does, to an extent, bring into question that nation yeah. announcing it. But hopefully that clarifying the fact that it's based on testimony should eradicate that because it's almost it's good in a way that people are questioning Saudi because we know their yeah. their reputation precedes them, you know. You the wouldn't give the government, the government, you wouldn't give them any degree of credibility with what they're doing in the likes of Yemen and places yeah. like that. But at the same time, what ends up happening is, say, for instance, it's a scene in Indonesia, but at the same time, it's also yeah. seen in Saudi. And then you're doing it on that day. Everybody's like, oh, you're doing it on that yeah. day because you follow Saudi. But that shouldn't be the, yeah. the, the understanding or even the Should reaction. Because I think last year, the first sighting was in uh, Malaysia. The year before, I think it was in yeah, Indonesia. Exactly. I think it boils down to the uh, uh, the issue of testimony mm-hmm. again, yeah, yeah. and the fact that if people announce it, then on what basis do we have to refuse it? And in the in the same way, uh, when we place our trust in someone selling halal meat to us, it's possible, it's possible that um, it's not halal, yeah. but for me, it's halal. Because I followed the the, the Sharia rulings on, and I've trusted have trusted my brother, yeah. so it may well be that in a certain place it was wrong. Yeah. Okay, it could possibly, be. but from my point of view, if it's been announced, on what basis do I go away from the principles of the the Sunnah mm-hmm. and base it on calculations when there has been many many reports by Muslims who are announcing they have seen it. And that's something which I cannot do because that would be going against yeah. the, the sunnah and the teaching of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa And also, you know, in regards to the calculations, it's important to mention a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, We are an illiterate ummah. We do not write and we do not calculate. The month is such and such, meaning sometimes it is 29 and sometimes it is 30. You know, subhanAllah. And this, this can be found in Bukhari. It's very famous. So the Prophet Wasallam, not because the fact that they were illiterate in the sense like at that time nobody could read or write. And not because, and not bec- and actually the Jewish, they were, astronomy and stuff like this, they were very advanced. So this is not the issue. At that time, the Prophet when he was in Medina, he could have probably uh, approached the Jews and said, actually, you know, to make us more accurate, can you please help us identify when... When the month starts, that was never the case. Um, so, if there's any, if there's any, inshallah, any other points, I think we should maybe start thinking about bringing it to uh, to to a conclusion. I, I think I just want to add to this calculation point, whereby uh, you, you're right. You, I fully agree with everything you said. Even when people use scientific observatory um, calculations now or their opinions, these are calculations. This is a fact. This isn't someone saying that look, we are there and the moon cannot be seen. These are calculations based upon someone sitting in a certain place in the world referring to another place in the world. And for this, regardless of how accurate it may be, Muhammad Sallam has categorically addressed it, saying that we do not use this method. Of course, and, and, and if, if you want to bring it down to a, a very simple level, is one Muslim is saying, I've seen it, and the other Muslim who's not even there is saying, no, you haven't. Exactly. That's really what... Yeah. And your comparison with the halal meat type thing is is a good comparison because what you're saying is if that person said it is and he's 
swear to say that he's a Muslim and he's given his shahada, then you you believe Bro, him. Bro, you don't even ask him. You don't ask you. him. You don't question him. You don't ask him. You know he's Muslim and he might not even have a, a halal sign outside his butchers. You know he's Muslim and you're going to go in and you very casually is going to order him meat and go home and cook it and eat it. And you're not going to be worried. You're not going to be, you know, uh, losing sleep thinking, yeah, no. was it halal or was it not halal? You know, uh, and I think that's important. So, so inshallah, to sort of conclude, is any any uh, anything else you guys want to add? Just to clarify one little bit of a point is, you know, this idea that once it's cited, that there are, people would probably agree with most of what's been said in terms of testimony. But sometimes there's a bit of disagreement in terms of locality. Mm-hmm. So people will say the testimony of one person over in one place, that means they've seen it, they can start their Eid or they can start their Ramadan. Yeah. But then I need to also have testimony for my locality. And I think this is a, a bit of confusion as well. So we need to clarify that confusion by understanding that the mainstream madhabs all agreed that when it was decided in one place that it was binding on everybody. Yes. There's one moon, there's one, you know, there's one birth of a moon. It's been cited, therefore it starts. It's not this case of I could, I therefore need to cite it in my locality as well. Even though citing and testimony is the methodology in itself. So that's where even if people agree with the testimony aspect, they sometimes are either confused or get duped to an extent to say that, oh, okay, I now also need to cite it here in my locality. And I think there's even a, I think there's a hadith that is used that um, I think some of the, the main madhabs disputed. So it must have been a weak hadith. It's the, the one to do with the fact that, let me just quickly read it. Um, to give the example of uh, Ibn Abbas. Yeah, you might remember it. I yeah, I think that this was a uh, situation where Ibn Abbas uh, rejected um, the sighting in uh, Syria. Yeah, Mu'awiyah. Mu- 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 no, it's uh, Mu'awiyah, Syria. Syria. And, um, and Ibn Abbas says, uh, and, and this is a very good example, actually, because what we've referred to here is hadith so mm-hmm. far. Uh, and Ibn Abbas was referring to what he understood from Muhammad Sallam. So it was his opinion based upon what he thought Muhammad Sallam had said. Mm. Um, and uh, he rejected uh, the sighting uh, from from Syria, and I mean you you can make your point, but just on this example, we've already addressed this issue because Muhammad Sallam already addressed this issue. So we have an example from Muhammad Sallam where he did one thing, and then we've got a Sahaba who's doing something different. Yeah. So in that situation, which one would you accept? Yeah, yeah. And it was, I don't think even the the one that says if it if it's sighted in the east, it should be accepted in the west. Isn't it even Ahmed Raza Bril said something like that as well? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ahmed Raza Bril. Yeah, yeah. Bolana yeah. Ahmed Raza Bril. He said that if it's if it's if it's cited on the in the east or the west, one or the other, yeah, yeah. then it's binding on, on the Muslims in, in the west. Exactly. And I think the main point is at the end of the day, it's, there's one moon. If it's been cited, it's yeah. it's binding on everybody. So I just wanted to raise that because even if people take the testimony aspect, they sometimes think, okay, I'll take that, but what if I still have to cite point. it myself? Or yeah, I mean that 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 goes back down to the you know uh, when's your Eid or yeah. when's your Ramadan yeah, starting? Exactly. You know, and, and that's just that's just that's just silly, yeah, your unfortunately. Mind. You know, but uh, but yeah, Subhanallah. Uh, if there's nothing else you guys want to add, I think it's important just to uh, remember that uh, you know the discussion here isn't one of those where normally we want to shoot down people. We're speaking mm-hmm. here because we have concerns for the Ummah, and it's important. Because the, the same issue uh, occurs every year, the same debate, it's important that what we do is we focus it on the root problem and that's the, the disunity of the Ummah in the sense that we don't have a, a central authority. Emotionally, the Ummah is united. Politically, we are not. You know, And I think that's something which is really important that we need to understand as well. And you know, in the coming days, it's important that we have this discussion and we always try to refer back to the Quran. Well, we always refer to Quran and Sunnah because this is the only uh, the source that can unite those who are disunited. Um, and so if there's nothing else you guys want to add, inshallah ta'ala, we'll... Uh, I would probably just say, I think the message needs to be that when we discuss with people, when this topic comes up, utilize this topic as a way of highlighting the disunity of the Ummah. Yes, if we Allah. utilize it to highlight the disunity of the Ummah, then maybe people's questions and narratives will move away from, or oh, am I right, am I wrong, or am I right, or are they right, to, okay, why is this problem, why is this problem even a problem, and how do we solve it? And I think maybe then at least we can move the narrative towards what the solution yeah. for it is. 
rather than constantly you know having these debates year after year okay jazakallah for listening uh if you're listening via podcast or watching on youtube jazakallah for my panel and inshallah ta'ala, anything good we've said is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and any mistake we've made is purely from ourselves and inshallah ta'ala, we look forward to uh bringing more episodes for you and keep us in your du'as and inshallah we will see you in the holy month of ramadan if Allah wills. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for watching that video. For more exclusive videos, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget, you can listen to some of our shows wherever you are because we're also available on all popular podcast platforms. And for more Voice of the Ummah content, make sure you check out the links to all of our social media platforms in the description below.